Welcome to lesson 23, all about input output tables. We're going to learn about patterns within the table. We're going to learn how to write equations that go with them. So let's get started and step into the world of Minecraft. Burr, it's kind of cold, but I can still help you learn all about input output tables, patterns, or rules and building equations. First, I need to find some trees to chop down, I think, to show you my first example. Okay, so now I'm gonna take one wood block and okay it makes four wood planks now i'm going to take two wood blocks and it gives me eight wood planks. What a beautiful sunset and a perfect time to figure out a good input output table for this information. All right, let's look at our first example from Minecraft to help us learn about input output tables, what they are, how they work, how there's patterns in them. So an input output table is just a list of numbers. And if you do some sort of a rule or operation to the numbers on the input side, then you'll get the numbers on the output side. Okay, I like to think of it like a factory, so that's why I liked my Minecraft example a lot with the crafting table. So, if you think about the one, I always start with the, the first line. If you think about the one, is there something you could do to the one to get it up to four? Is there a certain operation? Well, you might have said either plus three, okay, or maybe times four. Okay, now here's the thing I like to do. I like to check the second line next because that will really tell me which one of those works the best. So this pattern or rule is going to work on every line in the input output table. So how do you get from two to eight? Is it plus three? Is it times four? Okay, good, it's times four. So that must be my pattern or rule is times four. So now, what do you think we should put here for the output? Okay, good. Three times four is 12. What do you think we should put here for the output? Okay, great. 16. Okay, so four wood blocks will give us 16 planks. All right, now we're going to take it up a notch because in years past, you're used to writing patterns or rules as just an operation and a number like times four that's what this rule is now we're going to learn how to write it as an equation though and we're going to call all of the input numbers are x all of the output numbers are y amounts okay so these are all the x numbers these are all the y numbers and so we're going to be able to write an equation so that i could give you any x number and you could always give me the y number because we know it's times four so let's write it this way we have y equals it's always going to equal the x number times four 
Okay, and that looks a little silly like that with the X and the X. So I'm going to teach you another way to write it. If you watched my solve equations uh, video, then you know that we can bump a number next to a variable and it always represents multiplication. So we can write it as Y equals 4X. Okay, great job. We'll try another one. All right, here I'm starting with one wood plank, and I'm going to put three more down. Now I have two wood planks, and I'm also going to put three more down. And here's my last one. I have three wood planks. I'm going to put three more down. Here's our next input output example. And before we start, I want to explain one thing that there are two different types of input output tables or patterns that we're going to be working with today. And one of them is called multiplicative. And the other is called an additive pattern. So let's see if we can find some clues in those words as to what they mean. So what do you think multiplicative means? Okay, good. Probably you noticed that it has what looks kind of like multiply in it. So it's a pattern that multiplies. The last example we could call a multiplicative pattern. And then the other type of pattern is additive, and it has, you guessed it, the word add in it. So those are patterns where you're adding. Let's find out if this one is multiplicative or additive. Okay, so now let's check for a rule. So we're going from 1 to 4 again. So it could be times 4. Okay, I'm going to write down some of the options here. Uh, or it could be plus 3, because 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 plus 3 is also 4. So really, the best test is to check the next line. How do you get from 2 to 5? Okay, great. It's this plus 3, because 2 times 4 is too big. That would be 8. So it must be the plus 3 plus three. So now let's try doing the rest of the input output table. Can you pause the video and figure out my next two outputs? Okay, let's check your work. So three plus three is six. Four plus three is seven. You're also probably noticing that there's patterns going down these input output uh, sides as well four, five, six, seven. So it's kind of a nice little pattern there of plus one, same on the input side. Okay, now let's try to write a, a good equation that goes with these amounts. Remember that your input is are the x amounts, your output are the y amounts. And so my y amount is always going to equal the x side plus 3. So I can write that like this, x plus 3. So see, it just, just takes it up a notch. You already know the pattern, but now you can write the pattern in an equation. And now you know that this pattern, since it's plus or adding, it is an additive pattern. So now we've seen a multiplicative one and an additive. Let's check the next one. Now I'm going to use three cobblestone and it makes six stone slabs.
And now I'm going to use six cobblestones. And it gives me 12 stone slabs. Here we have our last example. And this one, we're going to find out whether it's multiplicative or additive what the rule is and see if we can write a good equation that goes with the rule or pattern. So the first thing I always like to do is check out the first line. Okay, can you pause the video and figure out the rule? All right, let's see how you did. It could either be plus three, but then down here, that doesn't really work. Plus three would be nine, so that doesn't work. Maybe it's times something then. Okay, three times two is six. Let's check this one. Six times two, oh, is 12. So I can do that for the rest of the input-output table. Okay, 9 times 2 is 18. 12 times 2 is 24. Okay, and let's remember that the input are my x amounts, the output are my y amounts. And let's, before we write our equation, did you figure out if this was multiplicative or additive? What do you think? All right, great. It's multiplicative because it's got the times two. And can you try this one out? See if you can write a good equation that has the times two in it. All right, let's check your work. So I'm saying that anything in the y side is going to always equal the x times two, but I'm going to write it a little differently because it looks a little better when you have the number first and then the x, 2x. Great job everyone! See you on the next lesson!